Hi, Float the Boaters. My name is Carla Schaus, and I am one of a few of the organizers for the Float the Vote event. I am also the president of TOPS, which is the Texas Offshore Performance Powerboat Squadron here on Lake Conroe. I have been putting together events as well as boating on Conroe for a number of years. So I am going to walk you through some information for the event that will hopefully answer all your questions, but will also try to ensure that everyone has a safe and enjoyable time on the water for the event. If you were looking for the captain's meeting, we opted to go with a pre-recording, which is what you found as opposed to the live uh, broadcast, just because we wanted to make sure that everybody could view it, view it more than once if they need to, view it at their leisure, ask questions if they need to, that type of thing. So uh, if you, again, if you're looking for the live captain's meeting, you won't find that, but you are still in the right place. So float the vote, what is float the vote? So float the vote is going to occur out here on Lake Conroe on October the 3rd, which is this Saturday. We're going to start at 11 30 and we anticipate that we'll be done prior to 2 p.m this is an event that is nonpartisan. we are out here to encourage and facilitate people to register to vote in the upcoming election the deadline is actually monday october the 5th so we only have a few days left as it is um, we're down to the wire so october 3rd will give you a great opportunity to change any information you have on current registration or start a new registration if you need to um, so we don't need to register for this event. You, there's no fee. There's no charge to participate. You don't have to let us know you're coming. We just ask that you show up. Um, the registration portion comes in, uh, because of the registration to vote if you aren't, or would like to change some of your information. So there's been a little bit of confusion there. So hopefully that clears that up. No registration required to participate in this event. So we are not only doing the parade on the water, but we will have two different locations that will have county registrars located in them so people can go and again, register to vote or change or update information that they have on file. Those two locations will be Papa's on the Lake and their address is 14632 Texas Highway 105 in Montgomery. And the other one I call Wave slash Mirage because some people know it by one and some people know it by other. It's technically like one property split into a couple different venues. So regardless of what you know it by, when you go there, they will be able to tell you where you need to be in order to register. So um, their address is 7041 Kingston Cove in Willis. So if you are not one of us lucky people that will be on boats on Saturday, you can also go to Papa's or Wave Mirage and watch the parade from either of those locations. They will both be along the parade route. So we anticipate this to be a large event. So we're doing things differently than we have in previous events. We'll meet at the southeast side of the dam. This is a map of Lake Conroe from 1097 Bridge south to 105. Um, this is the dam. It may look like I'm opposite. I'm upside down and opposite, so we'll see. But um, this is actually the southeast side on my map. This is where we'll be meeting. We call this Dam Beach. It's going to be the furthest away from Restaurant Row, so hopefully it should not be a problem to find us. There will be a group of boats near the dam. <laughs> Shouldn't be hard to find. Um, but we're going to we're gonna meet there uh, at 1130, but we ask that you be there a little bit early to find your one of the five predetermined groups. So these groups will each be escorted by a lead boat and spaced out in order to hopefully reduce issues with swamping wakes and congestion. That's the intention of our groups. So you'll be able to identify the different groups and the lead boats because the lead boat will have a banner. They're brightly colored and they actually have the name of the group on them. To give you an example, this is the power boat banner. It is fairly large. It is very brightly colored and it says power boat lead across it. So there are there's no guesswork here. <laughs> um, so you don't have to remember a color or anything. You just come and find your group. With that being said, let's go over the groups really quickly. So group one will be the power boats. These are going to be boats that are 26 foot in length or longer and are, are higher, have our higher speed capabilities. Again, they're going to be represented by the yellow banner. Group number two is the ski and wakeboard boats. They are going to be your lead boat will have a red banner. Group number three, this is a smaller craft group. If you're not sure where you need to be and you're a smaller craft, please just go to group three. You'll be represented by the green banner. It will say small craft on it. Um, and if you have any questions after you get there, you can always ask your lead boat, but these are gonna be the boats that don't fall under any of the other categories. 
So group four is pontoons and jet skis. Your group, group four, is going to be represented by the blue banner. Group five, cruisers and houseboat type boats. So these are going to be our boats that are typically slower in speed, but larger in size and throw off larger wakes. Your flag is going to be orange. So we have been asked recently, apparently quite a few times about sailboats. Sailboats are welcome. We just ask that you give yourself distance between yourselves and group five uh, in order to let their wakes dissipate. Obviously, if you are under power, you're probably going to be slower than most of the other boats. But if you're under sail, it could cause some right of way issues. So we just ask that you give yourself plenty of room behind group five. Um, so again, all the groups one through five will have colored flags, but they're also labeled. So we've taken the guesswork out of everything. Just come find your group. Just wait for instruction from there. So again, we'll start from the far southeast side. And so when you come and line up, please find your group. But we're going to try to space you group one being the furthest east to group five being the furthest west. And the reason for that is because as we start our route, group one will leave and then group two will slide over. And so no groups are crossing over anybody. And again, there's no guesswork to it. So our route will take us up the east side of the lake to the 1097 bridge where we will cut across. And then we will come south down the west side. We're gonna jut in here a little bit so um, the people in Walden at Breakwater Grill and right there on the levee can um, watch the parade as well. And we're gonna come down here. We get down to Restaurant Row. We're gonna come in here probably about to where the no wake buoys are, but again, you'll have a lead boat. Um, and then we're gonna come back out and we'll end up back down here somewhere at the dam. Um, we ask that you keep a couple things in mind as we go through this event. Specifically, group two, our wakeboard and ski boats. We ask that if you have the ability to reduce your wake, to please do so for this event. Um, some Obviously, some of them are equipped uh, with excellent ways to, to increase or reduce your wake. So we just ask that for this event that you reduce it as much as possible. Group number one, our power boats. So we've had some confusion about this in the past, and I want to clear this up because I don't want there to be any more confusion going forward. But... Um, Every once in a while, you will see a power boat peel away from the group periodically throughout the route. This is not uh, an option. This is a necessity. Uh, I don't expect anybody to understand power boats, but that isn't in the power boat world. But again, this is not a, an optional thing for us. This is a necessity. We run the risk when we idle for long periods of doing catastrophic damage to engines and some of our components. So to keep from overheating, we have to cool our boats down. In order to do that, we have to move. Um, when you see a power boat peel away, please don't try to follow them. Number one, they will outrun you. <laughs> and number two, um, they will eventually turn around and come back and probably retake their space uh, where they need to be. With that being said, um, if your lead boat happens to be one of those boats that peels off, again, just follow the next lead, uh, follow the person that's in front of you. Uh, because we will have at least two lead boats for the power boats. And the second one may not be marked, but everybody will know because it'll be near the first lead boat. Just don't follow any of the power boats that peel off. Um, it's Again, it's not meant to be showy or anything. It's literally something we have to do to prevent damage to our boats sometimes. So not all of them, but, but some of them. So if you are a power boat captain, if you have to peel away from the group to cool your boat down, I ask that when you come back around to reclaim your spot, be courteous of all the people that you're passing. You are waking them and um, we want to give them plenty of distance because that's what we're trying to avoid. So again, when you come back around, just be conscientious of the people around you. Um, safety always comes first. Hopefully this will be a great event. Everybody will have a great time. But first and foremost, we want to be concerned with our safety. So keep in mind that all normal laws that are normally on Lake Conroe, as well as the rules and regulations that apply here, are still applying on Saturday. Uh, we recommend that you don't drink and operate. If you choose to drink and operate, we ask that you do so responsibly. Again, the laws are the same. So if you decide to go out and BWI on Saturday, uh, don't expect anybody to cut you any slack because you're at an event. The laws are still the same. Law enforcement will be out in force to help us keep order to this and keep everybody safe. Um, safety or kill switch lanyard, lanyards. In some cases, this is a law. Um, it's recent over the last year or so, 
But if you have a safety or kill switch lanyard, please use it. Uh, even if it's not the law, if you have one, we, we suggest that you use it at all times. Life jackets. Also recommend that you wear your life jacket. In some cases, again, life jackets are required by law. We encourage you to use your, your PFDs, your personal flotation devices, and that you are aware and abide by all the PFD laws. Um, do not overload your boat. Guests and friends are great, but some of the videos I've seen recently, there were sometimes too many guests and friends on boats that caused um, some real issues like boat sinking. So friends are great, but every craft has a limit. So just adhere to those limits for your craft. Um, being a guest, as a captain, you are responsible for your guests. That includes their behavior. Um, but not all guests are boaters. So please guide them in proper boat etiquette as a captain and um, throw in along any boater safety and responsibility you think um, needs to be thrown in there to keep your passengers as well as those people around you safe. Um, a couple of those things could be hand signals. Uh, we don't have brake lights and hopefully everybody will keep a safe distance, but you could teach your passengers if they're not already aware that when you stop or slow down, that doing this will alert people to the fact behind you that you are stopping or slowing down. If you have to change direction or you're getting ready to make a turn or peel away, same as if you're in the water. Hey guys, I'm changing direction. I'm turning around. Um, and these are things that your passengers can help you with. So um, safe distancing is very important in events like this. Being able to stop, slow down and maneuver is obviously extremely important, you know, the only way to maneuver. So please maintain a safe distance um, between you and other boats. And that's not just forward and aft and uh, that's starboard and port as well. So if someone on your starboard needs to maneuver and you have to go to your port, please know that you have enough room there to maneuver if necessary and, and be aware of your spacing on your boats. Um, the, the parade will be at idle or planning speed for its entirety. This is different for each type of craft. So please stay within your group in your spot and don't attempt to overtake any other boats. This is not a race. If you get back to the dam first, there's no prize. Just kick back, relax and enjoy the ride for, for the duration of the event, but idle and planning speed throughout the entire uh, event for all boats. So um, lead boats will be spacing the groups out based on what they deem safe for various stretches of the parade route. Some areas may re require less spacing. Other areas like where we'll be cutting in at restaurant row may require more spacing. Um, in the event of going into restaurant row, it's gonna be a little bit different because when we go in here, we're gonna have boats going two different directions. Um, and they may be two different sizes. So we're asking the lead boats to kind of space that out a bit, but just be aware, double the wake, double the potential for, pro for problems. Um, just handle a little bit differently, be more vigilant about uh, watching and not stuff in wakes, that type of thing. So um, also keep in mind that our lead boats um, are volunteers and they'll be using their best judgment in order to help spread things out for us, but everyone in every vessel faces different challenges. Do not take any risks. If you are in a position, don't do anything you deem dangerous. I, I mean, the lead boat may not be in the same position you are six back. So use um, common sense and be a responsible captain, but we would never ask you to put yourself, your crew or your vessel in any type of danger um, where there's potential for bodily injury or property damage. So please just use common sense. Again, these uh, lead boats are volunteers and they can't control everything around them. So they're gonna use their best judgment and they're there uh, to give us a safety net and spacing in between groups. But just please, again, use common sense and be a responsible captain. So I'm messing with my notes over here because if I don't, I will forget. <laughs> um, so we all have, uh, we will have law enforcement on the lake. Um, they'll be all along the route. The constables will be present throughout the parade and they'll be along the route with other various and other various locations. When you see them, be respectful of their space. Um, if you're not aware of the laws that have to do with spacing and law enforcement on the water, please look those up. Um, if they have someone pulled over, if they're aiding someone, it is safer to be at a lower speed and further away. And again, there are laws that regulate these. 
So please know what those are so you're not putting anybody in jeopardy. And just give them a wave. Let them know that you appreciate them being out there um, and that we appreciate their service. And, you know, they are out there to keep us safe during this event. So just let them know that we appreciate them. Um, please use the VHF channel 78. Well, actually, let's use 80 for contact or communication. Um, channel 16 is for emergencies only and is monitored as it always is. So 80 for contact or communication, 16 for emergencies um, on the VHS Marine. 911 is always an option. If you don't have a radio, 911, they will get the call wherever it needs to go. Um, if it's a non-emergency boating issue, we have a couple different towing companies to choose from, but Towboat US off the top of my head can be reached at 936-524-0448. Um, and they're usually pretty close to what's going on on the lake. So myself and other event organizers would like to thank you for taking the time to join us um, for this upcoming event. If you still have questions after watching this video, please feel free to contact us. Um, all the information should be on our official event page on Facebook, um, on the flyer. I believe my number is on there as well as another organizer. You can always text us. That's the best way to get a hold of us. Um, on the day of the event, if you have issues or need to talk to someone and we can't get to a phone or sometimes my phone is buried in a boat bag. I, I'm usually pretty easy to find. I usually have a bullhorn. If you ask any of the power boaters where I am, they can probably tell you where you can find me. Um, but again, best way to get a hold of us is by text, even on the day of the event or uh, the 80 channel on VHF. So, um, I think we're about done. Um, just want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this. Obviously, it's 15, 20 minutes out of your life, but hopefully it'll make a difference and it'll answer all your questions. Um, please feel free to share the video to all the attendees. We're hoping that all the captains see it, but if you want to share it with your riders, um, absolutely uh, let them know what to expect and, and how they can help you, whether they're boaters or not. Uh, Saturday looks like it's going to be a great day for an event on the water. We're looking at a high of 83. I think we're looking at a max of about seven mile an hour winds and we're looking at 0% chance of rain right now. So we got lucky on this one, but um, we are very much looking forward to seeing you all and thanks for helping us float the vote. See you on Saturday.